The Great Awakening, a Study Guide The Great Awakening was a religious revival that occurred in the 1730s and 1740s. It started in England and gradually made its way over to the English colonies. One of the primary pastors who jumped on to the Great Awakening ideas was a man by the name of Jonathan Edwards. He was born in the colonies, and he liked to tell his congregation that they needed to remove the sin from their lives, or they were going to end up somewhere they didn't want to end up when they died. He joined in with the other pastors that uh, shared the ideas of the Great Awakening. George Whitefield was a minister who came over from England and brought the ideas of the Great Awakening with him. But he was a very different kind of preacher from what most of the people in the colonies were used to. He was very emotional and he'd wave his arms around and he'd raise and lower his voice. And I think a lot of the people came just to watch him originally. And then once they started watching and listening to him, they started really paying attention to the message that he was passing on. Other ministers joined the Great Awakening in the colonies and they called for a rebirth or a return to that stronger faith. Remember, most of the colonists when they first came over, at least their families, their ancestors, came over to practice religion the way they wanted to and religion was the primary focus of their lives. Well, once they got to America, they found out that survival became the primary focus of their lives and often their religious beliefs kind of fell to the side. Uh, They wanted to bring those ideas and that that faith back to the people on an everyday basis. The Great Awakening created a greater religious and political freedom in the colonies. Some of the things that they taught the people as they they were ministering to them was that they could also be church leaders. And if they could be church leaders, then they could also be leaders in the government because most of the church leaders were the government leaders. They tended to be the most well-educated, as well as often those who owned the most land and had the most money. Uh, Being able to share your own religious and political ideas really took off in the colonies, and many of the people liked the idea of thinking that they were just as capable as anyone else to lead their colonies. Church went from boring to interesting as more and more preachers started using the same style as George Whitefield. The belief that all people are equal grew in the colonies. Uh, George Whitefield had so many people coming to listen to him that he started having his services out in the fields because the church simply couldn't accommodate all the people. Uh, Some of those people who came to the fields were slaves. And they were hearing the message, just like the non-slaves were, that they were equal to each other. They were equal to the leaders, and there's no reason that they shouldn't also be leaders. This started stirring up ideas of abolitionism within the colonists as well as the slaves. Colonists started challenging authority and speaking their minds. Before, you didn't challenge the church. You didn't challenge the government. You were taught to do what they said and that there was a reason for it. And now all of a sudden they're being told to challenge that authority. Question it if you don't agree with it. And if you think you have a better idea, go ahead and speak your mind and share that idea. And these were novel ideas to many of the colonists. Because they were starting to speak their mind, it was important that education become more important in the colonies. Obviously, if people are speaking their mind, we want them to sound intelligent and know what they're talking about. And so they had to have improved education in order to make people feel more confident in sharing their thoughts and ideas. For the first time, the colonists were united in a common cause. All the colonists, from the northern to the southern colonies, had always been individuals, uh, each colony out for itself. And now they're united in this great awakening idea, all of them working towards a common goal. And that was something that had not happened in the English colonies before. The Great Awakening made way for the rapid spread of political ideas and revolutionary fervor in their struggle for independence. 
the colonists started believing that if they could question and challenge the authority here in their own towns and colonies, why shouldn't they question the leadership of Parliament and the King in England when they started passing laws and, and implementing taxes without any representation from the colonists? Why don't we have the right to challenge that? And you know what? The next step is, what do we need them for? We can just have a revolution and become our own leaders. And those ideas would never have spread throughout the colonies as quickly as they did had it not been for the Great Awakening. And that's your study guide on the Great Awakening.